as yeast start to become more aggressive or more invasive, what they do is they colonize. And the colonies of these yeast start to embed themselves in the lining of the digestive tract. And what they do is they release chemicals which break the, the, the digestive system down and allow for the yeast organisms to become more invasive. Yeast actually start to grow roots into the lining of the gut. Now what's, what's interesting about, if you, as an analogy, to this. You could have a dog in your neighborhood that's nice and sweet and friendly, but if that dog gets into a group of other dogs, they can start to take on the pack mentality and that pack becomes aggressive. Now behaviorally, it also, yeast organisms tend to give many kids on the spectrum sort of unique characteristics. The typical behavior of a child who's yeasty um, is a lack of eye contact decrease focus and attention, increase stemming behavior. Sometimes that's toe walking, sometimes that's spinning, sometimes that can be flicking of the fingers or flapping of the hands, becoming fixated on, on certain objects, um, but it, it tends to be more of a, a stemmy type behavior. The classic thing though for yeasty kids or yeast behavior is goofy, goofiness, giddiness, and silliness. And the kids tend to become withdrawn, you know, but they tend to become more goofy, giddy, and silly. Waking up in the middle of the night, goofy, giddy, and silly, is also characteristic of a yeast overgrowth. Now, we also see another organism in the digestive tracts of, of many autistic kids, and that's an organism called Clostridia, Clostridia being a bacteria. Behaviorally, the picture seems is definitely a little bit different. The eye contact can disappear, kids can become a little bit more stimmy, um, they're just not as, you know, not as aware, they're not focusing as well. But the, the one strong component is kids become more aggressive. Some kids become self-abusive with their head banging um, or you know, sort of injuring themselves in other ways. So the classic you know, behavioral picture with a yeast kid is goofy, giddiness, and silliness. Whereas the classic picture with a child who has clostridia issues, who's susceptible to it, is more aggressiveness and irritability. When you have both things going on, then the picture tends to get a little bit more blurry. Antifungal therapy, Nystatin, Diflucan, Nizerol, these different types of anti-yeast or what we also call antifungal therapy, when they're implemented, will have a very powerful effect on yeast. And so, so many times the yeast behaviors will diminish. However, if a child has an underlying clostridia problem and the clostridia is not being addressed, either with specific supplements like Culturel or other probiotics to keep that bacteria uh, at normal levels, many times it can become worse. So instead of a child losing their goofiness, giddiness, and silliness and becoming more functional, more aware, they actually become less aware, but they become aggressive and irritable. Their, beha their bad behaviors tend to go up. So one clue, when you're using an antifungal and the behaviors actually worsen from an aggressive and an irritability standpoint, think clostridia.